Hello, welcome to Storytime Read Along with me. Thomas and Friends Thomas and Percy Thomas, choo choo! This story is about me, Thomas the Tank Engine. I'm the number one engine of Sodor. I love to have adventures and try new things, but some things are not meant for engines. Thomas the Tank Engine loved working on his very own branch line. Annie and Clarabelle were Thomas's coaches. Annie could only take passengers, while Clarabelle could take passengers, luggage and the guard. The coaches were old and needed new paint, but Thomas didn't mind. Annie and Clarabelle were very special. Thomas's favourite place along the line was the river. Each time he rumbled over the bridge, he would look out for people fishing. Thomas often wished he could stay and watch. What would the fat controller say if we were late? said his driver. Thomas still thought it would be fun to stop by the river one day though. When he met another engine he would say, I want to go fishing. But they all told him the same thing. Engines don't go fishing. One day, Thomas stopped as usual to take on water at the station by the river. But the water tower wasn't working. Bother, said Thomas, I'm thirsty. Never mind, said his driver, we'll get some water from the river. Thomas's crew found a bucket and some rope and Thomas puffed back to the bridge. The bucket was old and full of holes. The crew pulled up bucket after bucket and emptied water into Thomas's tank as quickly as they could. Splash! That's better, smiled Thomas. He puffed away with Annie and Clarabelle rolling behind. Suddenly, Thomas began to feel an ache in his boiler. Steam hissed from his safety valve. Whoosh! There's too much steam, said his driver. Bust my buffers, cried Thomas. The crew dampened down his fire and Thomas struggled on. I'm going to burst, he said. Thomas stopped just outside the last station and his crew uncoupled Annie and Clarabelle. Then Thomas slid into the siding. The guard went to phone an engine inspector while driver found some signs. He put them in front of and behind Thomas. Danger! Keep away! the sign said. Soon the inspector and the fat controller arrived. Cheer up Thomas, they said, we'll soon put you right. The feed pipe is blocked, said the inspector, checking Thomas. I'll just look in the tanks. He climbed up and peered inside. Take a look at this, sir, said the inspector. So the fat controller clambered up. He looked inside and nearly fell off the ladder in surprise. Inspector, he said, there are fish in the tank. We must have fished them from the river with our bucket, said Thomas. So, Thomas, you have been fishing, said the fat controller. We must get those fish out right away. The crew all took turns at fishing in Thomas's tank, while the fat controller watched and shouted instructions. Thomas felt very funny with the fish wriggling and jiggling in his tank. When all the fish were caught, the fat controller, the inspector and Thomas's crew had a lovely supper of fish and chips. That was delicious, the fat controller told Thomas. But engines don't go fishing. You must promise not to do it again. I promise, sir, said Thomas sadly. Fishing is much too wriggly. Choo choo! Percy! Choo-choo! 
This story is about my good friend Percy, the number six engine. He's small, but he's not afraid to play tricks on the bigger engines. Here's how he became a really useful engine and stopped his silly tricks. There was once a tank engine called Percy, who was small and green and loved to play tricks. Peep peep! Hurry up, Gordon! Percy whistled one day. Your express train is ready! But when Gordon steamed out of the shed, all that was waiting for him was a train of dirty coal trucks. Gordon was very cross. Percy played a trick on James next. Wait here, James, said Percy. The fat controller is coming with a special train for you. James stayed in the shed all morning, but the fat controller never came. The other engines had to do all James's work. When the fat controller found out about Percy's trick, the little engine was in big trouble. Useful engines do not waste time playing silly tricks, the Fat Controller shouted. The next day, Percy had to collect some children from the beach. He borrowed Thomas's carriages, Annie and Clarabelle. Percy steamed to the station as a big storm began to break. He wished he were back in his nice warm shed. Hurry, hurry, Percy told his passengers. He shivered from funnel to footplate as the thunder crashed all around. Percy knew that he needed to be a really useful engine and get the children home safely. Raindrops bounced off his boiler as Percy puffed bravely down the track. Suddenly, Percy found himself wheel deep in water. The river had burst its banks. We must keep going, we must keep going, sang Annie and Clarabelle. But before long, Percy's driver had to stop the train. Percy's fire had almost gone out. He needed more fuel, but there wasn't any more coal. We'll have to pull up the floorboards and burn the wood, said Percy's fireman. With his fire burning brightly again, Percy felt much better. Suddenly there was a buzz buzz in the sky. It was Harold the helicopter. He dropped a parcel which landed with a bump. Inside were sandwiches and hot chocolate for the passengers and crew. Harold, Percy whistled as he pushed on through the flood. Percy was losing steam, but he kept on going, and with a great whoosh of steam, he pulled clear of the flood. Well done, Percy, the fat controller smiled as Percy puffed into the station. What a really useful engine you are. Pip beep. Thank you, sir, said Percy, feeling very proud. The tale of how Percy had saved his passengers from the storm soon reached the shed. Gordon and James weren't cross with Percy anymore. You're very brave. For a little engine, said Gordon kindly. Now that Percy knew how to be a really useful engine, he soon forgot all about playing tricks. 
Choo choo. Bye, friends. See you next time. Choo choo.